Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Uh, today we will have a quick overview of management of benzodiazepine overdose. So let's see. Benzodiazepine overdose, as you know, it is one of the most commonly used anxiolytic agent uh, throughout the world. It's one of the most commonly used basically for sedation and to treat anxiety and majority of the time it is also used for the treatment of withdrawal state, insomnia and drug associated agitation. So it's very commonly used drug and when you uh, go through the prescriptions of your patients you can see one of the benzodiazepines being described to these patients for some other reasons. So it can be either for the treatment of anxiety or maybe a withdrawal state. So one of the most commonly available and overdose that we are going to see is benzodiazepine overdose these days. So basically these benzodiazepines exert their effect via modulation of the gamma aminobutyric acid A or otherwise we can call it as GABA A receptor. So that is how the benzodiazepine act. And it is a chief inhibitory neurotransmitter of the CNS. So GABA is the chief inhibitory neurotransmitter of the central nervous system. And benzodiazepine, what does it does not alter the synthesis, release or metabolism of GABA, but rather potentiate its inhibitory action by augmenting the receptor binding. So that is how the benzodiazepine works. It does not alter the synthesis or release or metabolism of GABA, but rather it potentiate its inhibitory actions by augmenting the receptor binding. That how does the benzodiazepine act? So we can have a pictorial representation here. So this is how you can see the benzodiazepine receptor site and the GABA uh, uh, binding site. So the GABA receptor exert their effect by modulation of the GABA receptor, which is a primary inhibitory neurotransmitter in the CNS. So as I told, GABA is a primary inhibitor neurotransmitter in the central nervous system. That is how the benzodiazepine acts. Now coming to the pharmacokinetics because this is very important when you are managing a patient with uh, benzodiazepine overdose. You should understand basic pharmacokinetics and what are the different uh, groups of drugs that is available. It is basically divided into three. You have short acting benzodiazepine, you have intermediate acting benzodiazepine and you have long acting benzodiazepine. When in an ED, the most commonly what we are using is midazolam. These are all very short acting benzodiazepine which will quickly uh, go off its action after some minutes. Oh, so there are again there are intermediate and long acting like benzodiazepines examples are diazepam, lolazepam. These are examples for your long acting benzodiazepines. Now coming to the uh, short acting, they are the most common one is midazolam that we commonly use and intermediate and long acting they active metabolites accumulates and the clearance is getting impaired. So when you look at the intermediate and long acting what does it happen is that active metabolites of the same will get accumulated and the clearance is taking time. And most importantly, all these agents are rapidly absorbed. So the role of GA decontamination is very, very low when you are comparing when a patient comes to your ED with benzodiazepine overdose, it's rapidly get absorbed. So the moment the patient is consumed, maybe the patient reaches you within one or two hours, it gets rapidly absorbed and it starts exerting its effect. And it is also protein bound and it has gotten hepatic metabolism. So the basic pharmacokinetics that you need to remember is that you need to understand what type of benzodiazepine the patient has consumed, whether it's a short acting or an intermediate acting or a long acting benzodiazepine that the patient has consumed. The most commonly available agents like alprazolam are all a little bit of intermediate sort of acting agents and long acting agents are like diazepam and lorazepam. And you need to also understand that what happened exactly, the acting metabolites accumulates and the clearance is getting delayed. And all these benzodiazepines are rapidly absorbed. So as soon as they consume, it gets rapidly absorbed and it is also protein bound and it has got an hepatic metabolism. So this is the basic pharmacokinetics of your benzodiazepines. Now coming to the most important one, the clinical features. The most striking clinical features that you can have is CNS depression. The patient will be drowsy, maybe not arousable. The GCS will be maybe less than 8. But when you look at the other vital signs, all the vital signs will be normal. So that will be the classical presentation of a benzodiazepine overdose. When you look into the patient, the patient is drowsy, not arousable. If you are giving pain stimuli also, the patient is not able to arouse and uh, the GECS is very, very low. And when you look into the vital signs, you have normal blood pressure, you can have a normal heart rate. 
maybe the saturation is still maintained unless and until the patient has gone for a respiratory depression following an aspiration respiratory failure and respiratory depression that is a different scenario but routinely this patient will have come with a depressed cns sensorium when you look into the vital signs usually the vital signs are normal so that will be the classical presentation when you can suspect a patient with a benzodiazepine overdose and there are also cardiac related effects and fatalities are rare but uh, in pure benzodiazepine toxicity you can happen but it is again very rare respiratory depression or compromise usually can occur maybe the patient has consumed a larger amount but when you compare it with barbiturate the incidence is less with benzodiazepine so the most important uh, the striking features that i want you all to remember is that cns depression with a normal vital signs they can also come with a respiratory depression. There is an already an underlying respiratory pathology. On top of that, they have already consumed a benzodiazepine. They can come definitely in a respiratory depression. Or the amount of ingestion is very, very high. So as a result, they can present with respiratory depression. Usually, uh, the respiratory depression as compared to barbiturate is less for benzodiazepines. Now, uh, what are the different other clinical features? As I told, CNS depression which starts within 30 minutes and the sedative hypnotic toxidrome that is a depressed mental status can be seen and when you do a quick physical examination you won't find anything remarkable an unremarkable physical examination will be the one of the things that you will be able to see in a benzodiazepine hormones uh, overdose and you can have a normal vital sign you can remember coma with normal vitals so remember benzodiazepine overdose as the one of the differential diagnosis when you see a patient with coma with normal vitals and coma and respiratory depression can occur with ultra short acting agents also but uh, usually it is rare, but always remember when they have consumed something along with, maybe you, they have taken an other CNS depressant, uh, the chance of uh, respiratory depression is very high. And uh, very rarely a, a phenomena called paradoxical excitation may occur early in the case of moisture. That is very rare, but it can still occur paradoxical excitation. Usually we need to see depression, but a paradoxical excitation may also can be seen in patient with uh, benzodiazepine overdose. Now, the most important thing that you need to remember, there can be co-ingestion. Whenever you're dealing with any of the overdose or toxicology, you can not make sure that they have just consumed one drug. It can be a co-ingestion. So, the most commonly seen co-ingestion with benzodiazepine, one of the things is ethanol, which can lead to substantial respiratory depression and airway compromise. So, somebody have consumed ethanol along with benzodiazepine, both are very dangerous. So, they can have respiratory depression and they can have definitely have airway compromise. The dose usually required to produce respiratory compromise is difficult to quantify and depends upon multiple factors. So, you cannot say that uh, this patient has consumed 10, but he didn't develop respiratory depression, but this patient has consumed 5, he developed uh, respiratory depression we cannot quantify depending upon that it is multifactorial depending upon the total dosage the tolerance of the patient the weight age co-ingestion and even genetics some age factors is very important because elderly won't tolerate to that extent some patient is already consuming benzodiazepine for a longer time maybe three or four tablets doesn't do any harm but for a patient who's not taking regularly benzodiazepine he's taking just three or four tablets he can come with it uh, CNS depression. So uh, again, the dose it is it, we cannot predict the dose, and it will all depends upon the host factors also. So coming to the diagnosis, which is the, one of the most uh, key factor. So the most important uh, thing is with your CNS uh, depression with normal vital signs. Also, if you have a good toxicology lab, uh, we have got a WHO accredited uh, poison control center in our uh, hospital. So it is very easy for us to say. Uh, that you can send for urine toxicology screen for benzodiazepine metabolites but in all the centers it might not be available so we just need to depend upon your clinical features but if facilities are available go ahead with a urine toxicology screen for benzodiazepine metabolites since immunoassay do not detect all benzodiazepine a negative test does not exclude a diagnosis the commonly done the immunoassay do not detect all types of benzodiazepine but a negative result does not exclude the diagnosis so always your clinical findings and your uh, CNS depression is the primary uh, thing that you need to have a diagnosis of your uh, benzodiazepine overdose. Also, if I have a non-nucleoside reverse transcriptor inhibitor used to manage HIV is well known to cause a false positive result for benzodiazepine. So just check that if the patient is on an NRPI, uh, if I have it can give you a false result. And a response to glomacinil can confirm the diagnosis, but we never use that for our uh, routine purpose because as you know, benzodiazepine 
uh, it's a very short acting agents and uh, the patient can come back to normal and unless and until it is very indicated we will use flumazenil but this is one of the differential diagnostic one of the diagnostic tool by giving uh, flumazenil you can see how the patient is responding so that is regarding your diagnosis now coming to the toxicology screen as i told benzodiazepine not detected in standard assay for drug drug abuse panel may not be much needed in the immediate management a positive urine drug screen only indicated recent exposure but does not confirm casualty for acute toxicity or overdose we doesn't quantify it we just say that it is detected or not that is only thing whether you have taken one tablet it can become positive whether the patient is already taking for the last few days it can become positive so it doesn't quantify it will only say that it is positive or negative but it will, you will have some clues if you are in the dilemma that why this patient is having then you can send for a urine toxicology screen and you find out that okay the benzodiazepine has turned to be positive okay then you can have it okay fine this is that uh, this patient have, might have consumed a benzodiazepine so now coming to the initial management this is very important the standard management of our airway breathing circulation is a priority and it is a basically for majority of the cases that is only required you need to just take care of the airway breathing circulation just look at how the patient's breathing if there is any compromise in the airway go ahead and intubate the patient and secure the airway that is our priority and uh, very rarely there can be a problem into the circulation as as i said cardiac toxicity hypotension can happen but that's too very rarely but already there is an underlying pathology already there is an underlying cardiac pathology after this respiratory depression hypoxia and all those things it can precipitate and the patient can go into hypotension so the priority is again airway breathing and circulation oxygen is administered if hypoxia is present endotracheal intubation if needed and etco2 is again one of the important tool for your patient that who is going for a hypoventilation because there is a rapid increase in the antiviral carbon dioxide you can have a continuous monitoring of your etco2 via your nasal cannula but uh, etco2 initially was 25 now 35 45 that that gives you a clue that this patient is going for an impending respiratory failure and always make sure that you make put an iv access and continuous cardiac monitoring should be employed for all the patients serum glucose and thiamine should be given because hypoglycemia is one of the differential and thiamine again uh, alcohol abuse there can be thiamine deficiency also so it can be a uh, mixture of all so you need to give thiamine and always remember activated charcoal can be given but usually of no benefit because what i said it is rapidly absorbed so by the time the patient comes to you and you are planning to give this it of no use but still you can give a one dose of activated charcoal but again you need to make sure that you are airway is getting protected because otherwise there is a high chance of aspiration and always 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 remember regarding the co-ingestion the patient has taken something else or not along with the benzodiazepine and the now the most uh, uh, billion dollar question is that why not flumazenil flumazenil we know that it is an antidote for your benzodiazepine so why not give flumazenil and just give flumazenil let the patient go back home and the bystanders will be very happy uh, after giving one shot the patient is waking up so that is an antidote that is available it is a non specific competitive antagonist of benzodiazepine it is usually used for the reversal of sedating following a general anesthesia you have given a drug and you are sure that benzodiazepine you have given because of the benzodiazepine the patient has become having a cns depression or following a procedural sedation you can give flumazenil but not for a patient with overdose because it is again a very controversial thing but because when you are giving it to patient for an overdose we are not very sure that whether the patient has only consumed flumazenil whether there is any other co-ingestion whether the patient is taking benzodiazepine for a longer time there's a high chance that this patient can have a withdrawal seizure so flumazenil should be uh, you should be keeping flumazenil for the patient you should be giving flumazenil for those group of patients where you are very sure that the clinical features what you are seeing right now the cns depression and respiratory depression is everything is due to your drug that you are given for your procedure you are given a midazolam and after that only this develop for that reversal you can give flumazenil otherwise routinely you don't use flumazenil so that is my take on it and uh, uh, this is the consensus what we have right now regarding the use of flumazenil and again co-ingestion with tricyclic antidepressant that is again very common but you should not be using uh, flumazenil when you suspect a co-ingestion and also withdrawal seizures can be seen when the patient is having a chronic benzodiazepine after giving flumazenil so flumazenil is just reserved for the group of patients 
those who develop respiratory depression following a procedure for, for a procedure sedation you are given a drug and due to that this is happening you give flumazenil otherwise routinely don't give flumazenil and flumazenil again it is available as 0.5 mg per 5 ml so just remember 0.5 mg per 5 ml you can see the uh, picture representation there it is 0.5 mg per 5 ml and usual recommended dose is flumazenil 0.2 mg iv over 30 seconds and you can repeat next 0.2 mg to a maximum dose of 1 mg can be given until the desired effect is achieved. So that is uh, regarding flumacinil. If relapse of symptoms occur, flumacinil can be repeated at an interval of 20 minutes uh, with a maximum dose of 3 mg with, within any one hour, not more than that. And dose for the children is 0 0.01 milligram per kg. So in a nutshell, we have discussed regarding a uh, benzodiazepine overdose and how does the benzodiazepine act? What is the basic pharmacokinetics behind benzodiazepines and how does the clinical features occur for the patient after consuming an overdose of benzodiazepine? Usually what I suggested is that CNS depression with normal vital signs, that is a classical presentation, but they can have respiratory depression also depending upon the other co-ingestion. And how will you confirm the diagnosis? It is mostly clinically. When you have a suspicion, if you have facility available, go for a urine toxicology screen. It can be uh, detect your benzodiazepine. And there are uh, a little bit of uh, problem with the urine toxicology screen, which I have discussed earlier. So, uh, and once the patient is confirmed that the probability of a benzodiazepine overdose, you take care of his airway, breathing and circulation. The management of the airway, breathing, circulation is the key, holds the key. And if there is any chance of respiratory depression, go ahead and do an endotracheal intubation and give flumacinil for only those group of patients where you are very sure it is an iatrogenic, you have given the drug and after that this has happened, there is no other co-ingestion and all, then you give flumacinil. So blindly don't use flumacinil. I hope uh, this is useful for you. Thank you.